All right. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tammy, for the opportunity, and it's great、um, to share with parents about brain development and some activities that we can do、uh, for children、um, ages zero to five. So my name is Candy. I'm so glad I belong to the same church that、uh, we can share. If there's any question, feel free to ask me later on too. All right. So、um, for today, we will focus on some brief、uh, introduction of the brain development, and also some activities that can help children、uh, develop their brain. And then there's another another part of the workshop that will be in April uh, 21st. Uh, we can、uh, talk about some brain support parenting style and also some brain damaging、uh, style that we want to avoid. So for today, we talk about brain development. It can be a bit intimidating to talk about brain,、uh, but it's so important because we all want our children to、uh, start off、uh, with a healthy brain. But how can we see our child whether they are developing well or not?、Uh, we can just like. Open up their head and then see if it's working or not, right? But we can do it through、um, looking at the children's behavior. So it's like a, the behavior is like a window that we can see whether the child is、uh, has a healthy brain or not. For example, for some children, when they wake up,、uh, they may be very angry. They throw a tantrum right away every single morning, and or when they go to school, they cry a lot.、Um, we are not talking about zero or one or two, but maybe three or four or five. Um, then we know the child brain part、uh, about the、uh, emotions part. The children need some help、uh, to manage the emotions. And on the other hand, for some children, they have empathy. They're really kind, very polite. When they trip, when they fail,、um, they can get up and、uh, be themselves again. So we know that、uh, they are having a very healthy brain development. So it's very important to pay attention、uh, at our children's behavior, what they talk. Uh, how they behave,、uh, what they're thinking, their feelings and needs—they all can tell us something about their brain. So it's very important. And now,、uh, let's look at our the brain development. So it's actually started at、uh, the time、uh, right after con conception, three to four weeks after conception. So about twenty-five days, and then it will keep on developing, and uh, till uh, it's a lifelong process. Till actually,、um, even we.、Uh, Our brains are developing. Our parents' brains are still developing. So just a little bit slower. But by the time about nine months, we can see the shape, and、um, it's a lifelong process, though. So it's very important when we talk about brain development. It's not just for the children; it's for us as well. So it's very important. And when our child is was born, they born with about a hundred billion neurons. So we can see on this picture, those are different neurons, and most of them are not connected at all、uh, when they were born. And and every second, there are one one million neuron connection being connected. So the neuron will be connected. So we call it synaptic formation. So what is it? Is like、um, when it is formed, it can make、uh, master the skills. When we master the skills. So for example, when we do the example of、uh, doing math, one plus one equals two. So、uh, for a child learning it the very first time, it took a long time. So you say one, and then get another one, and then、uh, say okay, one plus one equals, and then they see it counting, count a couple times too, like one, two. Okay, it took a long time. So when they build up the skills, it took a long time. But when when they have the synaptic connection, they practice every day,、uh, the connection will be stronger. And they can do the things faster. They can master the skills. So for some kids, like I'm a preschool teacher in the morning, so for our teacher, our, our children for ages like four to five, they practice math addition every single day. Now they can do like maybe ninety five plus five. What is it? Then they can say one hundred. They can tell you right away because they practice it every day. So it's very important those synaptic connection. Once they are connected, when they build、um, practice the skills,、uh, it will be faster. The, to to、uh, do the same task, they will be faster and more efficient. So that's the synaptic formation part. On the other hand, and、uh, you know what? By the time of age two, actually, it's the peak one. So you can see this、uh, picture. So at the beginning, there are different neurons.、Uh, they are not connected. By age two, you can see lots of connection, and that's the peak time for the entire life. So age two is the peak time, and then. But at the same time, there is a process called pruning. So we have the formation. We also have pruning. So throughout the lifespan, there are two massive prunings. So it's like there are lots of toys that can be very distracting to kids, right? 
So also for our skills, so if there are lots of things getting our brain's attention, we can do well in something. We want to master the skills. So for the neurons that we don't need, it will be pruned. And there are two, uh, two periods to prune those uh, neurons connection. Um, one is starting from age two to 10. So you can see the six year old, they actually have less neuron connection than uh, age two. And another one will be um, starting from age 11. We call it second chance. Uh, they can master the skills again. Whenever they learn the new skills, they can build a synaptic connection again. Just take longer time when, whenever they get older and more efforts. So just like learning a language, it took more effort for us adults to learn the language, but for young kids, they learn much faster. So they can build a connection faster. And uh, the second period will be from uh, 11 to around uh, late adolescent, 19. So whatever uh, things that they do not need, it will be pruned away. The neuron will be pruned away, the connection, to make the process faster, to master the skills that they focus on. So it's very important for young children. Uh, we teach them lots of breath, Okay, they can expose to different activities, lots of different activities, rather than like in depth in one item only. When they get older, there is a natural pruning process. So whatever they learn, it will be uh, more efficient. When they use fast, use it more often, it will be more efficient. They can master the skills. But whatever things that they don't uh, use or skills that they don't, don't use, it will be pruned away. And they can always build it up again, just take more time and effort. So that's uh, um, some basic skills about the uh, brain development. How about the size of the brain? Uh, for children ages two to three, they got 80% of our adults brain already, the size. And for age six, about 95%. And do you know how to, when to be like more mature than similar to the adult's brain? It's actually age 25. So there's a huge gap, like from young children to age 25. And what's missing would be the part that uh, the skills like paying attention, we call them executive functions. Uh, paying attention, uh, they have self-control, not to fight, they listen well. Um, those are lot, there are lots of skills that, uh, that are missing, but they will be ma more mature at age 25. But those skills can be can be taught. And uh, you can see at the corner, we have uh, the company called Hopti Learning. We teach those skills to fill the gap. Because because uh, missing those skills, we call, it causes lots of uh, parent-child disagreement but those skills can be taught and learned. And how about uh, any difference for boys and girls? Yes, there is. Um, boys brain in general is about 10% bigger. It doesn't mean that um, boys are smarter or um, <laughs> can handle more things though. There's no evidence yet, okay? But uh, for sure the size is uh, bigger, uh, about 10% bigger. Now, what's the major difference between baby spring and adult spring? Uh, we call at the term called plasticity. It means that children's brains are much more easy to shape. So you know what, all the parents sitting down here, you have the power um, to shape your child's brain. You can build it up and you can destroy it. So it is our call, which way should we do? And uh, we will talk about some skills and in, in other webinars uh, uh, in a few weeks, we will talk about uh, a, more about those skills as well. But the major difference is baby spring is more plastic. And what's the pro of it? When a child receives supportive experience, very positive experience when they were young, it built up their healthy brain. We talk about those synaptic connection, right? It can connect well and be stronger. At the same time, the con is if the child has lots of negative experience for a prolonged period of time, we call that at first uh, childhood experiences, uh, we'll talk about that in the next webinar as well. Um, it's called ACEs. It will damage your brain. So at the time when the children's brain, the neurons supposed to form, they are actually being disconnected and pruned. It's not a natural process. So when it's so, it's so important to make sure that our children are being exposed to positive experience and not the negative one. The negative one uh, could be neglect, could be a uh, lot of uh, arguments at home. Those are negative experience. So it's very important. And we will have a whole webinar to talk about that part. So for today, we mainly have a brief intro of the uh, brain developments. And now we can talk about some activities that can simulate the children's brain. So first, um, we know that uh, parents sitting down here, we know of being exposed to more than one language. So our children are so privileged um, to be exposed to uh, more than one languages. 
because it actually developed the child's brain. It stimulated. Uh, it helps with the cognitive uh, flexibility. That's that's the part. Me, me, meaning that, uh, for example, a child um, when they hear one language, they need to process it. What kind of language is that? Is that English? Is that Mandarin? Is that Cantonese? What kind of language is that? So they need to process it, and then they need to be flexible to respond with another language. So they say, okay, what I heard is Chinese. Okay, Mandarin. Um, I need to suppress my English part and respond. Choose to select my Chinese words to respond. So that's a cognitive flexibility. So being so flexible that they can pick another language to respond. It also helps them to build a better attention span because they need to focus and hear what words are they saying, what language. It, rather than people who just speak one language, they don't need to pay attention, right? They just know one language. But for people who know multiple languages, um, they need to select, they need to be attentive to hear what kind of language they distinguish it. And it also helps them with the problem solving skills. For example, they know one word in English, but they know that they do not know the same word in Chinese. Then they need to figure out, use another words to describe it, um, to present uh, the same meaning, but with the uh, uh, the words that they know. And it also helps to protect children from uh, getting Alzheimer. It actually delay people uh, for about four years for getting Alzheimer if pe for people who know multiple languages. So it's very important uh, to teach our children at a young age with uh, multiple languages. And um, what parents, what can parents do? Um, later on, we'll talk about a Mexico story and return, and we can teach them some social emotional learning skills to help them uh, express themselves, maybe in different languages. Um, how do they feel? They know happy, What's, what does happy, how to say happy in Chinese? So they can learn multiple languages and also express their emotion in uh, multiple languages. And it's very important leverage grandparents or nannies help who speak other languages. Um, it's very, there, there was always a myth saying that, oh, okay, at home, they, when they grow up, they can uh, learn English later. Uh, so I want them to speak Chinese at home only or Cantonese at home only. So that's a myth. It's better to actually expose to both and speak both at home even when the child was young, um, that actually stimulate the brain development. So we don't need to select to be selective when the child was young. And candidly in, in the US, there's already 27% of children learning multiple languages under the age of five. So we do not need to just like stick on one, uh, uh, one language when the baby was young. We can just talk to them in different languages. Uh, they will understand, they will pick up and it helps them stimulate uh, and practice those skills. The second activity we can help children with is just uh, is something like gripping ability. Uh, remember, uh, some of you may have babies or remember your, when your child was a baby, the, those baby gym, they just lay down and then there were toys hanging up there and the child can just go and grab it. So it helped them with the hand-eye coordination. Uh, they stimulate the brain at that part. It also helped uh, thinking and planning. For example, if the child got a toy and um, up there, but it's blocked by the other toy, blocked by a car. Then the child needs to plan, okay, first step, I need to move the car away before I can grab maybe the monkey at the top. So they need to plan. Their brain is actually already working. Okay, and another time, if they can't, they thought it's here, the toy, the car is here, but the car is actually much further away. Then they need to have those problem solving skills. They need to extend their hand more to grab it. So you can see even those little gym, there is already have lots of activities that can stimulate the brain um, um, to do problem solving, to do the planning skills, the hand-eye coordination. So if you have older child, um, you can also give them two toys, um, actually three, three toys. Um, and both of them, both the hands already got one toy, okay? And you, and then you give them another one and they have to decide which one to give up. So that, that will require planning and problem solving too. Like, I want all three toys, but I only have two hands. How can I get the other toy that I want? So you can check it out. You can try with your child tonight too, or tomorrow. Okay. If the child would just like, some children are very, um, they all, all want all three, they would just maybe put it under the armpits and then grab the other toy. You can test it out. Like what kind of child you have. <laughs> okay. Or one child may be like, okay, I don't, I actually don't like this one as. Uh, as much as the other one. So I would just put this one down and then grab the other one. 
So you can test it, okay? The test them to tell you um, their preference and some problem solving skill. You can kind of see like, um, how do they solve a problem? Yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, other things we can do, um, we will talk about software and return later too. So you can also teach us how um, take turn. You can play games like taking turn to play some board games like uh, who will grab the toy first? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, let's see. And let's see how how the child will solve it. Okay, some children they may they may want want to lose, so they may hold your hands. Actually, the first step is not to get the toy. The first step is to make sure you don't grab it because they know you'll be faster than them. They will just put the hands on you and then they go and get it. So we can test it out, okay? There are many different ways like um, to practice those planning and problem solving skills that can stimulate the child's brain. So it's fun. So this is part about the free toys, uh, giving the third toy for the child. So it's very fun. The third thing is music. I know some of you are playing lots of music instruments already. You're doing the right thing. All right, that helps the child to inspire the emotions. Um, part, for example, when the child uh, is a bit mellow or angry, you can give them some calming music. Okay, it can help them ch child soothe down already. So music is very powerful. It helps uh, to inspire the emotions, to manage the emotions. And it also helps uh, to train the auditory system. It actually does get mature much faster. So for me, I've seen children who like music, who like to sing songs a lot, and uh, they play music instruments. When they hear a story, I'm sure some of you know, when they hear a story or hear what you said once, they remember it because they're auditory, they become auditory learner too. They, they hear it once, they can memorize it. So it gets mature much faster. Uh, that's the uh, good part about music that can stimulate the brain. And uh, it also, of course, helps with the language part because they think the sound, they know more lyrics and vocabularies. It helps with their reading skill because they because of vocabulary as well. It helps math as well, to uh, uh, stimulate that part. So it's the lot of advantage uh, for uh, for giving, introducing to, uh, music to your child early. Um, so what can parents do? We uh, do surfing return and also use some movement and rhythm to express the feelings and soothing music. Okay, the fourth part is something that the most important part, okay? If we forget what can we do to help the child to stimulate our children's brain, remember this part, uh, play. Play with your child often, very important. Uh, it in, in, it improves the social skills. So our child needs to know their rules to follow. We take turns. Um, um, and it also helps with the executive functions. That's the part, that's the part of the brain that will develop before age 25. Uh, so that's the exactly function part, paying attention, help them with memory, like uh, those memory games, memory board games, and planning ahead, like if, if for example, playing the, uh, the memory game, they need to remember, okay, next round, I should get this card. They, it helps them to plan ahead. Also the language skills, um, when you play, you, you talk, right? You don't just, uh, just sit down and play, you talk, and it practices the language skills, also the math skills, some mathematical games, that you can play with your child, uh, that would be um, very helpful to help with their brain development. Also, uh, some free play, and uh, yeah, and also deal with the disappointment as well, because uh, when they play the games, many many children that we have seen, even older child, um, they will feel disappointed when they got they lost a game, especially to parents, and not losing it once, but many times, they will become very they will become very disappointed. So it helps them to train how to manage the disappointment uh, so that next time when they play the same game, they know it's okay uh, to lose. Uh, you can see a lot of things through there. So that's a little bit about what we can do. And um, another thing is very important when we talk about play. Um, so summer is coming and also uh, usually we, also, we would uh, fill up our children's schedule with lots of things and not just summer, maybe throughout the year as well. So is it good for our children or not? Uh, let's see. So there's a test, um, it's been done a long time ago, 16, uh, 1968. There were uh, 1,600 children. They are being selected to do the same tests that uh, Dr. Law, uh, George Lenz created uh, for hiring NASA engineer. So they need to find people who are really innovative. So they put the, give the same test to ages three to five. So what is the results? So for age five, um, 
five-year-old, they actually got 98% as similar results as those engineers. So they can be high right away, okay? Three or five. They are very innovative, very creative. But what happened, they did, uh, they follow with the same group of children for the next um, 10 years. So by the time of 10, they give the same test to those children, only 30%. So you can see the creativity is like getting down. And then by 15 years old, get, get down to 12%. And then they give the same test to adults, um, only 2%. <laughs> So what happened? What happened? People are getting less and less creative when they get older. And uh, the five-year-old can become a NASA engineer, but not the adult. What happened? It's because there were so many activities that we have constrained our children's creativity. We did not have give, that, give them enough time for free play to explore their own interests. We may have a very structured programs for them at school um, that they just follow the teacher, follow the parents, follow the grandparents follow all the siblings, and they did not have the time to develop their own interests or their own creative way. So it's very important to give our children enough free time um, to develop that part in their brain, the creativity. So that would be something that parents can consider. Like for us, it's very tempting to fill up with our uh, lots of schedule, um, with lots of activities. Uh, but at the same time, it's, there's a trade off, like it really downgrade their creativity. So uh, remember, just uh, give them enough free play time uh, to, to be themselves and enjoy the time. So um, today's webinar is, we make it short because we know parents are busy, um, but I want to give a few, uh, just a couple of slides of a preview of what we are going to do next time. So next time we'll talk about brain support parenting and brain damage parenting. Why is this so important? This is my heart and passion uh, to be an advocate of this. Because a healthy parent-child relationship, you know what, is so crucial. It affects our child's entire life, and not just our child, the next generation as well. It is because there's something called toxic stress. So there are three kinds of stress. One is called positive stress. Positive stress is something like, uh, we know that, okay, a test is coming tomorrow. We'll motivate our, our own self, okay, get up early, be prepared for the test, do well, and then relax afterwards, right? So we can get a good achievement, it uh, stimulate our brain, we can uh, learn more, uh, become a better person. Those are positive stress. And then there's the second kind is called tolerable stress. So this part, tolerable stress is something that in the middle, for example, maybe uh, we need to move to another house. So we, we, we are a bit sad at that time, but it's a transition only. Maybe we need to switch to another school. Maybe some parents um, pass away. Maybe um, some difficult time happened. My friends, I lost my friend. So those are temporary period and it gives us some, some kinds of stress, but those are tolerable. And, but the worst thing is toxic stress. What toxic stress is when things come one after the other. When the person maybe lost a friend, and for and um, and then then people in the family pass away, and that they build the house. I do have children like that, very unfortunately. I'm a preschool teacher. I've seen children experiencing multiple things around the same time, and the child was was so frustrated, and it will affect the rest for the brain. We talk about today. We talk about those pruning part. It will actually prune the brain. Those neurons. It's supposed to be connected. Now it's disconnected. They were not able to manage the emotion. They got frustrated easily. Can they focus on ac academic, academic performance will be downgraded. They do not know how to manage their feelings. They do not have good friends because of that, uh, because they want to play with friends and then friends will say, oh, he, she said, um, don't play with me. Don't look at me like that. So it will damage a lot in their brain if they do not have somebody uh, at home to help them deal with those toxic stress. And how to deal with those toxic stress is to have a healthy parent-child relationship. And you know what? When they have those toxic stress a lot of times, it also affects their brain, their health. Um, so we can see from this picture, when a child experiences those kinds of toxic stress, the brain architecture will change. We talk about those pruning part. It's supposed to be forming. The brain, healthy brain, it becomes damaged. You can see under stress, it's supposed to be like that, that's normal. And there are lots of uh, 
connection being pruned away because uh, so the the child may may not do well one plus one continue to take it a long time even they practice many times so the child will also have hormone change they have stress hormone that build up uh, there are two kinds of hormone uh, that has been affecting stress hormone and also it affects the immune system I'm not sure if you know, but I do know some adults too, when they were children, uh, they have, they've been encountering lots of stress at home and at school, and they become sick very easily uh, because they're, it activates an inflammatory pathway in the body. It means like they can get, uh, the body gets sick uh, very easily. And also it can change their genetics if we don't deal with that stress. Uh, so it, what does it mean? A person may not be depressed before. Now, when they become teenager, become very depressed. Even they have very healthy family. So there are lots of things that can affect the children. That's why very important to build a healthy parent-child relationship. So I'm so glad that today you all come to, um, we have a little bit of a snapshot about brain development and about what activities that we can stimulate our children's brain. And at the same time, it's so important to build a healthy parent-child relationship. And for the next uh, next meeting uh, on uh, in on April twenty first, we will talk more about it, uh, how to build a healthy parent-child relationship that support the brain development, and what are the things that can damage the brain, and we should avoid. So that would be something we talk next time. And feel free to invite friends. And for today's talk, I will record it and uh, I will post it. Uh, on uh, Harvard TV Learning's channel. So feel free to share with friends too. This is my passion to let more parents know about it. Because sometimes we just don't know what we did can directly affect the brain development and affect our child's health, physical health, and also mental health, and also the next generation as well. So um, yeah, so today's talk will end here. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, this is my email address. And, um, and we put lots of educational information on Facebook too. And uh, you can feel free to look at it.